Hi, Angela Wolf, fashion designer and online instructor. And we are back with a pair of leggings, this time adding a wider waistband and a little coin pocket. Actually, I made it wide enough to put a credit card and some money for when I go for a jog. So let me show you how to alter your pattern. Again, here we have just a basic legging pattern. The first thing you need to do is decide how wide you want your waistband. So this original pattern had no waistband and just a fold over elastic. So I have a lot of room to work here. So the first thing you want to do is measure, I have a one inch band seam allowance on this pattern. So you have to check your pattern if you're using something different. So I know that one inch down, and I'll just go with the large size here, which is an 18. Oh, that was pretty good. One inch down, that is the seam allowance. So we're gonna ignore that for right now. So that's where I'm gonna base this start on. But how wide is your seam allowance going to be when you're finished? Well, we'll worry about that later. The first thing I wanna do is just measure how far down on the pattern I want this waistband to go. So if this pattern fit perfectly, and I'm just gonna draw a line. I'm using a straight line even though the waist is a curve, but for now this will just give me a guide. I know that that's my seam allowance at the top. So let's just say we want our waistband to go down, oh, let's just say four inches. That would look pretty good. So I'm gonna go down here and mark down. So from the very top, we're going down about five inches. Do this all the way. So again, that's taking off that one inch seam allowance four inches, but I'm not cutting that off yet because I need to add a seam allowance. So the next thing I wanna do is just give myself a nice curve for the waist. Let's see here, this is the front. Again, pull out your colored Sharpies because you need to mark seam allowances on here. I actually prefer the back of my pants to be a little bit higher. It's called the bend over thing, <laughs> where it looks pretty good from the back. So I prefer the back to be a little higher on my curved waistband. So you can see how this is curved. So the only thing I'm gonna have to change now is however high this is right here, which is four inches. Here I'm gonna need to do the same thing, four inches. Okay, so that's gonna be my new mark up here. I'm gonna transfer this curve up here. And that looks pretty good. You'll true this line. The next thing you do, need to do is add a seam allowance to the top. So up here, I like to use a half inch seam allowance for the waist. I can always trim it off, but it's just easier to work with. But you could also use a quarter or three eighths. Those are all good for this. So I'm gonna add it half of an inch and that's going to be my cutting line. I don't think you need to watch me draw that. <laughs> all right, now down here. On this pattern, notice there's no side seam. If I go back here to the pattern, I mean to the dress form, there's a side seam. And the side seam is a little bit more to the front than the back. So what I have here is I need to give myself two side seams. So going back to the pattern, if I measure from the front to the back, if this is the halfway point, I want this to be a little closer to the front. I'm just gonna give myself a guide here. And that will be my new waistband. You can angle it to the front a little bit, whatever you wanna do. But whatever you do for this line, you're gonna need to add a seam allowance when you cut it apart. So this will be my front piece. This right here is going to be my fold line. So that's my front. I need to cut two of those on the fold. So you know what that means? The grain line needs to be parallel to this right here. That's gonna be my grain line. So that's one pattern piece. I need to add seam allowances through here and here when I cut that apart. This is gonna be my back piece. Again, this piece here is gonna to need to be cut on the fold. So make sure that's a straight line and your grain line is going to be parallel to that. Again, giving myself some markings for the seam allowance, 
That's a fold, and I already have a seam allowance up there, and there will be a seam allowance here. So now I have two new pattern pieces, one, two, and then your base pant. What about the coin pocket? Well, I'll show you that as well, but that's how you make a wider waistband on a regular pair of leggings. Very easy to do. So you can see I've already sewn together my leggings. They're lower, and now we'll work on the waistband. So this is what we're gonna be trying to do. I thought I'd do this out of a muslin fabric first, just to give, I thought you'd be able to see this a little better. So this is the right side. You can see the little pocket. And then this is the inside. You can also add a little bit of elastic if you need to be. If you're using a good quality stretch fabric, you probably won't need the elastic because the fabric will give you enough support. So here's my back piece. So you can see, just to relate. There's my back, and there's my front that I've cut out. Got the idea? All right, we're gonna work on the front piece because that's where our coin pocket's going to go. I've got two pieces cut here for the coin pocket. I, you can cut them the same width as your waistband or not. The one over there is a little bit shorter, but you can kind of see it. So if you don't want to see it, make sure this is cut the same width. You can have this any width you want. I did it where I could just see it and fit a credit card in there. All right, so this is, I've got my front. Make sure I got, yeah. Two fronts and two pockets. I'm going to just chalk this in so you can see it. You need to give yourself an opening, however wide you want your opening. I marked it in chalk so you can see it, and now I'm just gonna give myself a little snip. And now you'll see why I like a half inch seam allowance for my waistband so I can have a good snip to watch this. So again, this would relate to my pocket right here. So let's go to the sewing machine, and I'll show you how to sew this together. And just gonna use a straight stitch. And I'm stitching from one chalk mark to the other. So one snip to the other. One of the front pieces and one of the pockets. Use a bit, uh, you could use a back stitch or a stay stitch. We're gonna be stitching this pretty good, so either one's fine. So that's one side. I have my snips here all the way to my seam line. So this is actually going to go to the back like this and get pressed. Which I'll show you up there. One thing that you might want to notice is that if you're worried about your fabric being flimsy, you can do an understitch right here, and I'll go ahead and do that just so you can see what it looks like. I'm using a contrasting thread so you can see this. If you have a cover stitch machine, you could run this through a cover stitch and it would look great, but don't stitch past those marks that you have. All right, that will keep that in place towards the wrong side. Got it? All right, now we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. So if this is the right side, there we go. All right, again, this is the right side. Just make sure you have the right sides together or your pocket won't match up. So again, I'm gonna go up here, I'll go ahead and chalk this in just so you can see this. I have my snips as a guide. No need to use pins. And again, I'm just gonna stitch from one marking to the other. I'll use a stay stitch. There we go. All right, now if you were using stretch thread, this will stretch. I'm just using regular thread for now. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is just snip right to the stitch line, not through, but to it. And let's double check this one. Looks like this is already snipped to the right place. So this one I added under stitching, the other one I did not. Let's go back up here and press real quick. You can see why we snipped this. Now this will be my seam allowance, okay? And then we're gonna press the other one. Now, 
I'm not using an iron shoe or a press cloth with this knit right now, but depending on what knit you have or how hot your iron is, you might want to use that to make sure you don't scar your fabric. Don't use too hot of an iron with knits. Okay, so here's my pieces. So this is the right side. And that's the right side. Okay. Next thing I'm gonna do is sew together my pockets. There's no need to stitch the bottom because it's gonna be attached at the waistband. But if yours isn't going to be, then you'll need to serge it or maybe you cut your pocket on the fold. Okay. Get rid of these threads here. You're gonna stitch your entire waistband together, but these are right sides together. I'm gonna stitch here all the way up to that point and then here all the way down to that point. I'm just gonna do just a little bit to show you and then you, you'll figure the rest out. It's the same as sewing, just a pair of leggings. So I like to start right at the corner of that pocket. Stitch down. Now this is where you would need to use a triple stitch, a zigzag stitch, stretch thread, something, because this is the part that's gonna stretch to get on your body. I'm just using a straight stitch just to make this faster. Okay. All right, let's see, whoops. Okay, back up to the iron and our coin pocket is looking great. A little pressing. So whichever way you decide to have the front of your garment, here's your coin pocket. It looks great from the front. The last step you wanna do is on this facing piece, after you press this with the fabric going a little bit towards the facing, you'll need to trim off the excess part of the bottom of your facing piece. So this is the right side of the garment and that's the wrong side. And your wider waistband and coin packet are all finished. <laughs>